Hi everyone and welcome. Today we're going to be trying disassembling a few applications. So first of all I have this very simple application over here which is the typical L word in C. Even if you don't know C that's fine. Um, so basically what's going to happen here is that I'm going to uh, compile this application and then I'm going to try to disassemble it using Ghidra. So if you don't understand what this does, it's basically just printing this string on the screen. It's a very simple application. So um, you can download Ghidra, which is the tool that I'm going to be using now on the, from the uh, NSA website you'll find it. I'm not going to give you the exact link, that's because that link is going to change over time. So once you download it, make sure that you have uh, the Java JDK on your machine. Uh, the open JDK will be, will be good, will be enough. So I have uh, unpacked my um, zip. So I'm inside the installation and then I run this one because that's a Linux machine. I guess that this one is the batch for Windows, but again, that's a Linux machine. And as you can see, that's definitely a Java application. Okay, so first of all, you need to create a project. A project is basically an empty folder. So you create a new project. So you have two different types of project, non-shared and shared. Uh, you only need a shared project if you work with other people. So you can share your project and you can assign different permission to different users. Again, it's just myself. So non-shared. Next. In here, you specify the location where you want to store your project and your project name, which is going to be YouTube. Finish. At this stage, you click on this green dragon to open your code browser. It's, got, it's going to take a while. It is. Okay, now, uh, as I said before, a project is basically an empty folder. Uh, now you need to do this file, import file, and you're going to add all the application that you want to decompile. In this case, we start just with this hello world, and I select it, select file to import, and then it's going to analyze it. So, and it detected ELF format, which is correct, because if you watch my previous classes, you will know that ELF is the actual uh, executable format for Linux. Again, it has detected that that's um, little endian, uh 64-bit processor, blah, blah, blah. And it's been compiled with GCC because it's also able to detect the compiler that was used. So that's correct. I don't need to change it. Destination folder is fine. Program name. And then you have a few other options over here. But um, I don't think you're going to need to change this. No, definitely not for this one. Okay, so we are ready. Okay, import file, and now hello world has not been analyzed. Would you like to analyze it now? Yes, and in the meanwhile, uh, okay, uh, so in here you need to choose a few other options. Aggressive instruction find that you won't need this for the time being. Um, yeah, you don't need this, but yeah, let's let's include it anyway. Analyze. And in here you have the 
result summary, um, which is going to give you a few information. So, for example, again, the GCC processor, Little Endian, and it, that's a 64 bits application. Um, a few other things is telling you that's the version of Gitra. And uh, what else? What else? L format. And uh, yeah. Okay, I guess it's done. Let's see what we have here. So if you watch my previous classes, you will know what the BSS and the data sections are. And also you will know what the text is. So basically it contains the code, the logic of my program. And as you can see, in here we have assembly, and in here we have the C program. So C program and assembly. Now in here, I have my import, right? And in here I have my export. And this one is very important, the function. And we're going to see why and labels. Uh, now, as we want to be looking for the entry point, we look for the main, main in function. And here it is. And this, as you can see, it looks like kind of the program that we had before, but it's not exactly the same. See? Because first of all, you can see that the main is returning an undefined type. It doesn't return integer. And secondly, it's, the signature is void. It doesn't contain the count of the argument and the array of the argument. So basically, at this stage, you need to give a kind of some sort of help to Ghidra to better understand. So we go here and to make your life easier, what you can do is that you can actually change the signature to the function so that edit function signature so that you can work better, right? And then this one it will be integer. Okay. Here it is. Now that's actually correct. This is what we, we have over here, right? So of uh, yeah sorry about that it's here so it's it's the same right so this is what you can do so basically um the this assembling this assembly version is never going to be one to one right so you kind of need to give Ghidra some sort of help in this case we have reorganized the main function and um, as you can see now, if I click print, it takes me to the print function, right? Return. And as you can see, if you watch my previous class, you will know what rect means in assembly. Again, Another interesting thing is having a look at the fine string. That seems important because, especially when you handle malware and virus, uh, you might want to be looking for strings that are suspicious, strings that somehow can give you some information about errors or passwords or anything that's been eaten. 
And another important thing here is that in here, uh, these colors, they're actually telling you something. If you ever gonna see some red bar over here, that means that you are encountering entropy, which means that um, those are sections that are encrypted. You might have encrypted string or encrypted resources. So anytime you see something red in here, you gotta be very careful because um, it could be something suspicious. And um, another thing I want to show you. So again, here yeah, the function. We've seen already this, right? And um, print. Um, function graph. Not the function, but it would be for this one. Okay, so if I click here, it's gonna take me to the entry point. And then in here, uh, probably the last thing I wanna show you is, yeah, I guess that will be all. Um, now, we can definitely move to the next examples, which are a little bit more complicated. There is um, much more stuff that I need to show you there. Okay, now we're gonna try to analyze the malware. So we can close this one and save and we import another one, this one. And as you can see now, the software has detected that this is a Windows P executable. It's all correct. Okay. It's importing. Okay, now it's gonna need to analyze it. Yes. And I want this, and especially this one. Propagate, external, blah, blah, blah. Analyze. Okay. And uh, basically, this is a malware that um, uh, works especially through RDP connection. It tries to steal your information. It tries to get um, whatever it's on the screen, whatever you're typing and so on. And uh, we're gonna try to analyze it to see what's inside. Um, I might wanna uh, pause the recording for a while until the old program gets loaded. Done. So let's have a look at some of these DLL that were imported, for example, this one. And those were the function that we are importing. For example, this one. This one is a function that's generally used by Keylogger. So if I do right click, show reference to, I have a list of all the references, let's click randomly on one of these. And then I click on here on the compile and I see how it's used. Now, here the thing is that if you know that this application should not be doing this, at this stage, you will be, you will be warned. You will know that something uh, weird is happening, right? So look, it's using the map virtual key and then it's doing other things and you can actually have a look at the whole code and uh, 
you can go through the entire application and analyze what's happening here. But that this will give you uh, a quick picture of what's happening. So you can see these guys very busy, right? They are doing lots of stuff with this DLL and sending messages. And let's find something else, some more element, for example. Here yeah, we have that get current position. That's also suspicious. Why do you want to get the current position? It's highly suspicious. So you can do the same here, show reference to, and uh, for example, here, get foreground window, get current position, and so on, right? And then one more, for example, um, let's see if I find Yep. Again, that's very suspicious. Why do you want to do this? So, again, same thing. So, you are opening an FTP connection and eventually. Uh, you are closing the connection over here, getting the file size, and let's see if you internet net read file. Yes, you are also actually downloading stuff you are actually also downloading stuff over the internet right so as you can see this stuff is very powerful and um, another thing I want to show you is um, in here, you can quickly build a graph of all this function. So you can see which function is calling which function. And then in here, you can expand. So for example, you could Go here, function, and find the entry function. And then over here, you could go window, and then uh, call graph, which will give you a pretty good understanding of what's going on here. Uh, yep. Yeah. And the last thing I want to show you is that this disassembler is able to show you the images and uh, all embedded file, so you can actually see what's in it. And um, I guess. That will be all for today. That was just a very quick introduction. I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, so like this video if you like it and share it and subscribe. And uh, thank you very much.